Good morning. We're going to look at section 1.1. Uh, we're going to look at different sets of numbers. We're going to look at natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. If you look at your notes, and hopefully you have your notes with you, you'll see at the very top where it says sets of numbers directly beneath the set of natural numbers. Back in days of yore, all we needed to do was to count things. And so all we needed for numbers was the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you notice those three dots afterwards, that means that the set of numbers goes on to infinity. Notice that in the set of natural numbers, 0 wasn't even there. And in fact, there was a big debate as to whether or not to have 0 be a number. I mean, heck, you're not counting anything with 0. What's the point of having a 0 if there's nothing there to count? And so eventually they also came up with a set of numbers called whole numbers. And whole numbers you can read my writing were all the natural numbers including zero. So every natural number was a whole number and the whole numbers just had the additional added feature of having the number 0. And if you notice, I've got these little squiggly brackets here. These are sets. So we've got squiggly brackets. Whole numbers are great. Natural numbers are great. We've counted everything we wanted. But as time went by and our, our, our society got more complex, we had operations come into play. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And when we, the big deal that we had with, with these is that when we subtracted two numbers, sometimes when we subtract two numbers, we get a positive answer, but sometimes when we subtract two numbers, we get an answer that's less than zero. And so consequently, our number system was not complete. We didn't have numbers that dealt with subtraction problems where the answer was less than zero. And so consequently, we came up with a group of numbers called integers. And integers are just positive and negative natural numbers with zero. And if you notice, they go to negative infinity and they go to positive infinity. And that covered all of our, our subtraction problems. Take any two integers and subtract them and you're going to get a nice answer that's an integer and we've got a number for it. So life is good. But the problem is that we also have multiplication and division. And the key issue was division. We didn't have answers for every division problem. Take, for instance, fractions. We don't have fractions that include in any of our integers, and we want to be able to express parts of whole. And so the next set of numbers that they came up with are what we call rational numbers. Rational is a word that is a fancy word in mathematics that just means fractions. And a rational number is any number that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. And if you notice, they have p over q. And they make the distinction that q can't equal 0. Let's remember the denominator of a fraction can never equal zero. So rational numbers, one half, negative two thirds, three fourths, included every number that could be expressed as a fraction. Notice that natural numbers can also be expressed as a fraction. If we have a natural number like two, we can express two as two over one. And so a natural number two is also a rational number. And in fact, every single natural number can be expressed as a fraction, just that natural number over 1. And so every single natural number is also a rational number. Every single whole number is also a rational number. And in fact, every single integer is also a rational number. So the set of rational numbers included all those prior sets. And rational numbers are great. They, they gave us answers to every single problem we had under the sun. Boy, they were wonderful. And then society got more complex and said, OK, so what's the square root of 2? And there wasn't a rational number that, that equaled the square root of 2. So our numbering system was incomplete. Our numbering system didn't have an answer for the square root of 2. So we needed more numbers. And so if we had numbers that were rational numbers, any numbers that weren't rational were thus irrational. And that's that next set of numbers that we have down there. And irrational numbers are numbers that can't be expressed as a fraction. The square root of 2 is a great example. Can't be expressed as a fraction as a ratio of two integers. 
pi, 3.14159 dot dot dot, is an irrational number. It cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers. Any number that, that can be written as a fraction, when you look at it as a decimal, will have a repeating decimal to it. One third is, is 0.3333333 on for infinity. One sixth is 0.166666 on for infinity. But irrational numbers, when you express them as decimals, won't have that repeating decimal to it. The square root of two is a number that will go on forever, but won't have that repeating nice pattern that we have with one third. So we have rational numbers and we have irrational numbers. And no number can be both rational and irrational at the same time. So we have two distinct sets of numbers. And when we take these rational numbers and irrational numbers, and we combine those two sets, if I can get the scroller to go down, it won't. Close what? Our last set is the set of real numbers. And the real numbers is the union of the set of, of rational numbers and irrational numbers. So if you take the set of rational numbers, whoops, take the set of rational numbers, I'm going to have to learn how to write on this thing, and the set of irrational numbers, yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to write on this. Yeah and put them together, you got the set of reals. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. That sounds good. All right. All right. That's it.